Work bees, you've got to subdue them. Make no mistake about it. It's no good being kind or anything else. You've got to be on top of them, not them on top of you. If it's a very strong hive, they'll give you courage. You're going to have to work hard to keep them down. Okay? And there's some things to look for. When approaching them, always smoke the entrance and make sure it goes in the entrance. No good smoking up here. You've got to get into that entrance. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> now the good book says you've got to wait three or four minutes. That's a lot of garbage. You don't have to. The message from that smoke is instantaneous right through the hole. When you're working them, don't go thumping and crashing and banging and what have you. You stir them up. Okay? locks, put them behind you and fold them over like that. This is a suggestion. So you're not tripping over the thing. Nothing worse than a frustrated, angry beekeeper. The bees will soon get the same way. You've got to work quietly and peacefully. Again, because I've hesitated a bit, I'll give them one more smoke. Here I'm standing there. Am I going to lift that side or that side? That side will be as low as this one. That's right. If I lift this side, it's because they're angry, they've got a straight view at me. They've got a good go, haven't they? But I'm not going to lift it without smoke in my hand. Huh. Always have smoke close by, either sitting on a box or as Bob does, and I don't know how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit hard. Then easy like that, that's all okay. Okay. Well, We're going to lift the lid. We lift it away from us and we put some smoke in there. Now, depending on the bees as to how much smoke you use, if they start flying out, they're coming out in all directions, give them a good dose of smoke and close them up again. Let them think about the smoke they've got for a while and give them a chance to calm down. What you've done when you've opened them up is you've, you've enlivened the attack pheromone, it's circulating the hive, and if you go on trying to work them, you're battling it. You aren't going to win. You're going to lose for sure. Okay, so you don't open them up until such time as you know that they're pretty quiet, which these blokes are. So if, if the bees are coming out and having a go at you, because they're a nice strong hive, they've got a nice aggressive queen, they're nice black bees, they gather lots of honey, but they love having a fight, okay? They're fighting. Let's assume they're a fighter. I open them up like that, and I out of here everywhere. Close them up for a while. Give them a dose of smoke, close them up. Come back to them in the, as you work another couple of hives, come back and have another look. Okay, you, let, you open up again, and they're still doing the same thing. Give them another dose, dose of smoke and go away and get this little container of sugar and water in a spray can, like a, a soap dispenser. Yeah. Trigger okay. Give them a good dose, really dose them. I imagine that I'm pouring that over there. I'm not doing to these bees because they're quiet. Really give them a good dose. Then get your spray can and spray it on top of there and close it up. And just leave it for a little while. Now, a little while is about how long it takes me to put that down, turn around and, and, and address you again. You will find when you open it up, they will be interested in what you've sprayed on there. She's starting to win. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, these are fairly quiet bees. One there just tried to sting me. We can talk. You do get stung. Make no mistake about it. Sorry, I'm doing something automatically here. Again, this is where the guard bees are hanging out. Not so much there. So a little bit of smoke down there. Okay. If they're nice and quiet, and that's enough. What I'm giving you there now. If they're quiet. If they're not quiet, give them a good dose. Get into them. You won't give them too much. Now, this thing unfortunately has got this all on top of it. But if they're an aggressive hive, they'll be all up on top of these top bars. They'll be sitting up on top, they'll be buzzing, they'll be rushing around, they'll have their tails in the air with the sting sticking out. They mean business. Don't attempt to handle them at this stage, okay? Because you're on a losing streak. They've got their ante up and they're going to have a go at you. Get to them with the smoker and again, imagine I'm spraying them. Give them a good dose of smoke until you force them down in between those cracks. You've got no hope until they're down there. Because from up here they can launch it. An attack straight away. Down in there, they haven't got a direct flight at you. But they've got honey and what have you around for them to work so that they've got something to do. The important thing with handling bees is to make sure that they've got something to do. So if there's a, a sudden cessation in the, in the nectar flow, the thunderstorm comes over or it goes dark and the, and the nectar suddenly stops, you'll find they'll become aggressive. It's time either to brave it out, put your protective gear on, smoke them like hell and give them a bad time, or to give it away.
come back tomorrow morning and it's gone. Someone says something about cool smoke and hot smoke. Is that yes, there is such a thing. You'll see that's a blue, uh, not a blue, a white colour. It's starting to go blue now. It's like, white. All right, if I get one, the other one around. Yeah, yeah. If I get one that's nearly empty. This will probably go blue. Now, I'm a nervous beekeeper. I'm, I'm forever pushing this thing around. You see it's nice white smoke. It's going well, but I keep going. It's still white. Don't make a liar out of me, do you? <laughs> Don't burn well. Eventually that'll get very hot. I'm sorry folks, I'm trying to get it in the air. That'll get so hot you won't be able to handle it. And the smoke coming out of there will be blue in colour. If that's happening, you've got blue smoke, you're short on fuel, and you've been using your smoker too much. You won't be able to touch it, it'll burn you. If you like to feel it now, you'll feel the radiant heat coming off it. You can feel the heat, don't touch it because it is nearly burning temperature. Okay. It's not going to go blue, but it's obvious if it's blue, it's blue smoke. You want this nice white smoke. So I'm going to have to get this off because it's in the way. <laughs> There's our trap. Sorry? No, no, that's just a little bit of pollen or, or debris of some sort. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't have anything in it, I don't think. Is someone going to volunteer to open that up and look for hard metal? I don't think there's anything in it. It probably had oil in it and the oil's evaporated. Uh, even while I'm talking to you, you'll notice I picked up that, that smoker and quite unconsciously, without thinking, gave them a little bit of smoke. Doesn't have to be much. Understand that for beekeeping to be a pleasure, it's got to be easy. If you've got to go into your car and you've got to put all of this stuff on and your clothes on and you're worried that you're going to get stung, is it really a pleasure or is it a chore? Right? Now, these will land on you like this bloke has here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they've land on you, they're, they're waiting their time to sting you. But most times it's a good sign if bees will land on you, you're doing something right. right? Don't worry about trying to stop bees stinging you, because you can't. If they want to sting you, they will. It doesn't matter what you do. You can flap your hands and do whatever you like. If they want to get you, they will. Make no mistake about it. So the answer is to subdue them. Now see they're starting to come up on top of you now. This is not disastrous, but it's what I'm trying to say to you, that those bees on top are in a position to turn nasty and want some. Again, a little bit of smoke. And if we wait a little while, most of them will disappear, I hope. Never work with animals. Lift it gently. If you lift it in a hurry, out they'll come. Lay it down, not in front of the hole, behind the hole. You happy with it there? <laughs> Your bees are flying in out of here. You always work from the back, because this is where most of the guard bees are, at the front. Okay. Put it in there, lever it up gently, try not to make it pop like that one did. Lift it up, and take it away. Put it down alongside this. There is an argument saying you should put it there because if the queen was on it, she's going to fall out there and find it hard to get back in. Um, I think if there's a queen on it. Now see this bee with his tail down? He is angry. He is, is attempting to get the, the gumption up to sting me. He's no, he's, no, he's going to have another go. Unless you're particularly skilled, I don't recommend you open the middle normally. The, the middle one, because there's probably the queen in there, and as you pull her out, you may roll her and kill her. And we don't want that. Okay, so this one, this outside one, where the probably is, is only full of honey, probably those two are only just full of honey, there's no brood in them. You'd think that'd be a good one to pull out, but it is not, because there's burr came down in here. There's one piece of it. So that's stuck tight, and as you pull it out, it rolls up and it kills bees. So, Another dose of smoke. Remember this smoke stuff. Squeeze the frames apart. So there's a gap, then squeeze that side apart. And while you're doing that, you're also trying to tighten those ones up. 
Okay, you can even put it down there and, and do it like that. The reason is you can see we've now opened a gap that's bigger than the others. We want that gap because we don't want to kill bees as we pull it out. <laughs> Simple as that. So before you pull it out, there's no harm in giving it an extra smoke. Remember that smoke, it's good stuff. So here we go, we've got a loose frame in there. Around here there's often bees, but they're only just hanging there unless they're <laughs> angry, unless you haven't smoked them enough. You'll find you can flick them aside and they won't touch you. Now if you put your smoker in there and lift that side up and put your finger underneath, you're ready to lift it. You can then lever this side out and transfer your grip to there. Now you'll see there's bees hanging on there, but none of them are being <coughs> rolled. Okay, so they've come out exactly as they were in the, in the hive. Alright, now, from there, you still may have bees underneath it, so just give it a bit of a wipe with the fingers. Hard if you're missing one. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, now the correct is, is just turn it up like this and do, do it like this. That really is unnecessary. Now I've got bees flying around, and at this stage I'll give them another smoke. I'll give those a smoke because they're starting to come out and I'll give these fellas up here a bit of a smoke just to say look there is smoke around. Okay. Don't want to have a look to make sure there's not a queen on this one. So I turn it over like that, as simple as that. I look in there, I can't see it. I turn it like that, as I do I look down it. The queen is actually taller than the other bees and if she's Italian she's a lot more gold in colour. You'll see her abdomen sticking out. Really is obvious once you get to nuts. So a quick look down there will tell me there's no bees. Now I can have a look in it for eggs. I might have to put my glasses on. So. Now I want to look in here to see whether we've got brood or eggs and there is absolutely nothing in there and there is no honey. If, if you want to have a look, if you want to pass that around, there is a beautiful lot of, of brood, uh, brood, pollen. Pollen, pollen, pollen. pollen, okay. This has been used for breeding. There, there has been eggs and, and larvae in here but they've all hatched, it's now autumn, they're starting to close it down. Hang on to the underneath mm -hmm. the tabs with your spare finger. The idea is you flick it in the air with those and hit it down with the palm of your hand. It's quite a manoeuvre, you do get used to it. But it's a movement like this, see, you're coming up and, you're, and you can do it twice. You get rid of most of the bees. Now if you, if, if you want to pass that one around, It is my opinion that if you put it back the way you got it before, that's the way the bees have organised it. They've done it for a reason. Why should you go and upset it and say so you reorganise your hive? <coughs> Just working with the bees, not against them. So, we'll pretend we're looking for the queen. We're not going to find her because we've just left it too long. We would open it up like so, brush the bees aside, have a quick look. Oh, that bloke has stung me. Yeah, yeah. Right, they are starting to get a bit agitated mm -hmm. at the present time because too open, too it's all being too slow. Yeah. How long should it take just to do what you wanted to do then? Find the queen. It allows himself a couple of minutes. Find all. the queen and check the heart, check the brood. Check, check the brood. Your commercial beekeeper, when he goes through his yard of bees, he goes through, usually he's robbing them, he goes through and he checks that there's there's, well, there's honey and wax in each one. Mm. Right. He, he simply, if there's, if there's plenty in there, and there's plenty of bees, he marks it that he's going to rob it. He's going to put a clearer board on it or something like that. And he really doesn't check the brood at that stage. It's only if he opens it up and there's no honey in it or there's very few bees, there's a problem, he will then go down to the, to the brood every time.